Hello! If this is the first video of mine that you are watching, welcome to my channel, but if it is not, welcome back. Today, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be doing an April wrap-up video. Now, April wasn't a great reading month for me, but it wasn't bad. Definitely the highlight of the month in terms of reading was the continuation and completion of series that I managed to accomplish, so I'm quite excited to talk through some of the books here today. As well, you can maybe tell that I'm in a slightly different setup than usual and that is because there is construction happening on the other side of the wall where I usually film. So if you can hear any background construction noise I sincerely apologize. I'm going to try and edit it out as best I can. Finally on the back half of my The Bar and the Bookcase tag I have made myself a distilled beverage to go along with these distilled reviews. Here I have a gin and cider cocktail from a local to me distillery and cidery. And I haven't tried it yet, but I have been smelling it for the past 10 minutes or so whilst I set up to film this video. I can, I can tell already it's going to be quite a dry cider, which depending on the cider I can really like. I don't smell much gin at all. So, I've never tried this before, but let's get my live reaction here on video. Cheers. It's not as dry as I was anticipating, actually. Unfortunately, a lot of the carbonation has kind of gone away in the 10 minutes or so it took to film this intro and set up. So I'm not getting much of the carbonation and I'm getting a little bit of the gin kind of at the back of my throat at the very end. Definitely the cider is more forward. I quite like this. It's definitely not too sweet, but like I said, it's not nearly as dry as it smells. So I'm really pleasantly surprised by this. Also, I apologize for the fact that <laughs> there's going to be lipstick all over the rim of this glass by the uh, time that I finish this. But yeah, I really enjoy this gin cider cocktail. So now that we have the taste test out of the way, let's dive right into the books. So first, just to mention it and then kind of get it out of the way, I am going to mention the book that I am currently reading because even though it's chunky, I'm hoping I can make a good dent in this over the next few days. And that is, of course, The Light of All That Falls by James Islington. This is the final book in the Lycanus trilogy, and I am so excited to finally finish this trilogy. I feel as if I have been seeing people all over booktube and all over bookstagram start this trilogy and it really inspired me to finally pick up the final installment. So hopefully I can finish this by the end of the month, but if not, this will likely be my first finished book of May. This is a high epic fantasy trilogy. If you like Wheel of Time, there are a lot of similarities between Wheel of Time and this book. You can also see where Islington has been inspired by Sanderson and the Stormlight Archive. Now, I remember not minding those similarities and that obvious inspiration because I did really enjoy the characters and the unique twist that Islington was able to bring to the plot. I'm not sure what else I can say about this final book without ruining the previous two, but if you enjoy really high epic fantasy with multiple perspectives and really interesting character development, I would definitely recommend checking out this trilogy here. Next on to a book that I actually did finish in April. This is Hereticus by Dan Abnett, which is the final book in the Eisenhorn trilogy. Now this was my first foray into the Warhammer 40k books and I really really loved it. Abnett took this in directions that I was not anticipating and especially in this final installment he did not hold back from throwing any punches. There were a lot of dramatic moments and really no one was safe when this book began and it really just dove right into the thick of things very, very quickly. 
I, like I said, loved this trilogy. If you enjoy science fiction and also enjoy morality and gray characters and the exploration of what makes a decision good or bad, I think you will enjoy the Eisenhorn trilogy because Eisenhorn is such a fascinating character. I feel as if I could do a character study on him alone and be riveted and go on for pages and pages and pages. So I think this was a four star read for me, but overall loved the trilogy, was so excited to finish this book and this trilogy out in April. The one downside to this filming location is in my living room I have a mirror right next to me so I can see if I have lipstick on my teeth. Here I don't, so I am just riding on a prayer right now. <laughs> Now, the next book that I read was Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin, which is the second book in the Serpent and Dove trilogy. Now, I didn't love this installment as much as I enjoyed the first one. I rated the first book five stars. I adored our main characters. This is a young adult enemies to lovers fantasy romance, and we have a witch hunter who falls in love with a witch in a world where magic is forbidden and punishable by death. And in Blood and Honey, I found myself missing the banter and the relationship between our main characters from the first book. Even though I understand the growth that had to occur within Blood and Honey for our characters, and I can see that it's a really good sequel and setting things up quite nicely for the final book, I was just a little bit disappointed. So I think I gave this three and a half stars. However, nevertheless, I am really excited to pick up the final book in this trilogy and see how Mahurin concludes things for our characters because I would say the stakes were definitely raised at the end of Blood and Honey. The next book that I read was Red Queen by Victoria Aviard, and I won't talk too much about this book because I did film an entire reading vlog about it, which I will link if you haven't seen. Long story short, I enjoyed this book, but I didn't love it. It's another enemies to lovers young adult fantasy romance, but unfortunately in this case I didn't find myself in love with any of our characters. There was a love triangle or love quadrant that was introduced, which isn't my favorite trope in romance, and I'm not sure where Aviard is going to take that. Like I said in the reading vlog, I already own the sequel to this book, Glass Sword, so I will be reading the next book in this series at some point. I'm just not quite sure when. So we will see what I think about Glass Sword and if I will be continuing on further with the series when I get the chance to pick that one up. Now, the final book that I read in April is Crayon of Thunder by Tochi Onibuchi, which is another young adult fantasy. However, I would say this book is on the younger end of young adult. And this is the second book in a duology, which began with Beasts Made of Night that I read, I think only last year, but again, for being just a duology. It took me so long to finally pick up the sequel and finish out the series. I, again, really enjoyed this book. I did have a few hesitations surrounding it, and my hesitations surrounding this installment are basically the exact same issues that I had with the first book. Because it is on the younger end of YA, I found this duology to be so, so fast-paced, to the point where I was not able to connect with most of the characters. There might have been one or two that I genuinely found myself caring about, but for the large part, I was really ambivalent towards what happened to them. And I am very much a character-driven reader. I love reading about characters and I love getting into the mind of the characters I'm reading about. But even though I didn't love the characters, I loved the premise of this book. 
In this world, sin has a physical manifestation, which is just an idea that I find so fascinating. It's an idea that I read about for the first time in Smoke by Dan Valita, which is actually right here behind me because I'm in this new location. And I just find that fa that's such a fascinating concept. In both Smoke and Crown of Thunder, the physical manifestation of sin also ties into class disparity and poverty, and it just creates such a interesting concept and setup that you can really think about as critically or as surface level as you want to take from it. So I think it was really interesting that Onibuchi did this in a young adult novel because when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have read as far into that physical manifestation of sin, tying it to class disparity and poverty. But then as an adult reading this book, I was really able to glean those finer details. So I loved that. The writing was really good as well. So even though I didn't love the characters, I think it is a duology that will stick with me for for a while. So I'm very happy to have finally read it and I enjoyed this this book. So these are the books that I managed to read in April. Like I said, it wasn't the best month of reading for me ever, but I'm still happy with all the books I did manage to read because I enjoyed them all. There wasn't one flop there and we will see if I manage to read the light of all that falls before the end of the month. But for now, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will be back soon with a new one. Bye for now. I also feel as if I need to acknowledge Spencer who has been adorably curled up fast asleep beside me and not causing havoc like my last video. So he's been on his best behavior for this video and I'll show you a little sneak peek. <laughs> Lovely. Hereticus? Hereticus? Here Hereticus? Why is pronunciation so hard? <laughs> mm. I swear they weren't sawing and hammering before I started filming. They were just talking really loud and slamming doors, but of course. Next, I read Serpent. No, <laughs> maybe that cocktail is stronger than I thought. This could be a bad idea. <laughs> Enjoyed this book. I didn't. This is fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. Book whilst 